Hey everyone, I wanted to uh, make a quick video and talk to you a little bit about uh, WordPress migration, um, or at least about uh, what I do for uh, WordPress migration. Uh, I tend to work between uh, production, the staging, and then my, my own local environment. And um, I don't really use the WordPress import export, which um, exports and then imports in, in XML format. Um, there are times that I do, but most often I'm kind of going back and forth, um, reproducing an environment or um, making changes in one environment and then immediately um, uh, cloning that uh, environment to the other using um, a, a database dump. So uh, I'm either using, um, you know, uh, PHP My Admin, um, Navicat, which is what I actually use. Or you can use, um, you know, MySQL Workbench or something like that. But you can do a dump, or you can do exports fairly quickly. Uh, I've got an article on the website that I've uh, written, which uh, talks about migration and just how I go about doing that with some uh, SQL statements and queries uh, to do some fast uh, search and replace of um, old host names and to to a new host name. Um, but this video is going to be about a tool that I created um, that's gotten better. <laughs> It's gotten better over time, um, and I've made adjustments to the query to really um, uh, just just make it a little bit more useful. So um, first off, the, the tool that can be found at uh, GitHub. Um, it's called uh, really simple WP Migrate Generator or Gen, and um, there's a URL to it here. If you click that, it's going to take you to this very basic tool. So real quick, I'll show you kind of how it works and what it does. Um, so I'm gonna paste in a, a generic name so sometimes I'll, I'll be going from staging and I'll be uh, doing a search and replace of a particular URL to a uh, production URL so let's say www here um, first thing you should notice is there's some string counts off to the right side 19 and 15 um, there's kind of a, a gotcha here um, when you are doing a search and replace within the database WordPress has uh, what is known as serialized data or um, they, they use PHP to serialize certain sets of data for instance um, the, the tables like uh, post meta, comment meta, user meta and even the WP options table often have uh, serialized PHP data now the problem uh, with doing a search and replace with that on, on those type of data uh, on that data is that um, you can it, it'll work you'll do a search and replace but what happens is there's additional data that track the uh, string lengths um, and when you replace something those string lengths are never changed and what ends up happening is that that serialized data essentially gets corrupt and PHP just just can't really read it anymore so the uh, the symptom of that is that you've done a search and replace and then you go into your data uh, into your WordPress installation and you're looking at your um, your meta boxes let's say and the data is gone you, you, you don't see your data anymore well that's because uh, PHP can no longer read that serialized data because it was corrupted um, and you can go back into the database and um, actually fix this by replacing the string that you replaced back to the old string. Now, one way to avoid this, which kind of requires you to change your uh, your workflow, is by having by replacing a string, uh, an old host name, uh, to a new host name that has an exact uh, string length. So in this case, it wouldn't work because you have uh, a string length of 19 versus 15 here but let's say you're going from a staging environment that is uh, STG uh, to www they are both of the same string length so if you did a search and replace um, across the you can do a search and replace across the board and not have to worry about any kind of corrupted data uh, because the string length is the same everything gets re replaced um, there really wouldn't be anything to worry about and this is really uh, a very nice workflow and kind of speeds everything up. But it's it's one of those gotchas that you you kind of have to be aware of uh, so you don't kind of fall into into that trap. Now here's a let, let's just go back to what we had right before. So by default, uh, if you run this tool, now I'll run it right now. 
um, you're going to get uh, a, a series of, um, of SQL statements that you can use and, and run to to do a search and replace on your um, uh, WordPress installation database. Now, the first option here is skip serialized data. It, this is here to protect you from uh, this uh, um, uh, string length uh, issue in serialized data. So all, all it does is it's going to add a, a little bit extra to your query here. Um, which checks for does a very basic check for serialized data in, um, in in the in the fields or I'm sorry in the rows that you're replace doing search and replace and just it's going to skip those fields completely. So you can if you uncheck that resubmit it you'll notice the query is a lot lot shorter. And let's just go over the queries real quick. So you see, we're, we're, we're targeting the options table, the post table, comments, links, some of the post meta, user meta, and comment meta tables. And all we're doing is a search and replace. We're, we're, we're targeting specific fields, and we're replacing all the host names with uh, the, 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 the new host name. Um, so again, skip serialized data is really useful. Um, I would have it on. Uh, you'd be able to skip that. Um, Additionally, you might have to go into your database, um, into your post meta, and you might have to still do some updating of values. But this little option may save you some headaches in the in, in the long run. Um, there's another option called disable plugins. There's times where you're you've got a lot of plugins, let's say on uh, production, and you're trying to mirror your database over to your um, your uh, development environment, and some of these plugins um, without you know, being reinitialized just kind of cause havoc and your installation just doesn't run. So you want to um, disable those plugins right off the bat so that you can, you know, start your, your installation um, fresh and you can enable these plugins um, one by one by one um, on your own uh, development environment. So you can quickly uh, check that box, click submit, and what that's going to add is just an additional query here, um, which basically uh, uh, removes a, um, a an option from the options table, and this effectively disables uh, that plugin itself, or all the plugins that are that have been installed. And uh, there's another option down here, which is a little bit more advanced, which is um, you can disable very specific plugins. So let's say you want to disable, um, you know, WP uh, uh, three total catch or something, or you know. Um, uh, the Peekaboo plugin or something like that. Um, right here, I, I've just included a link over to the WordPress uh, repository, which has a list of all the WordPress, the current WordPress plugins that are available. So let's say we wanted to replace, and we'll just do this first one here, one blog cacher um, plugin. We just want to disable that particular plugin. Well, to do that, um, first off, we don't want to disable all plugins. Um, so I'm just going to enter that here and just a plugin name and I can click submit and there's a statement right here so it adds an additional statement um, what it does is just basically do a simple search and replace for that with um, some asterisks and this will effectively disable the plugin um, it won't um, it, and it does the asterisks because it runs into the whole uh, serialized data issue so it does an exact length um, number of asterisks that you know this is here. So if this is uh, tw uh, 12, 14 string characters, there are 14 you know asterisks over here. So it does a replace and disables that plugin. And if you wanted to, you can have um, another plugin. You just do a comma separated list. So let's say uh, plugin uh, ABC, and I'm going to click submit again, and then it essentially disables just those two specific plugins. So these are a little bit more advanced. I actually don't um, uh, use this uh, this bottom option very very often. But the two tech check boxes over here, and then uh, the old host, new host. That's really what I use. And um, I often come to this tool. Um, I use it often when I'm uh, going between my own uh, development environment and uh, staging. And um, so far, it's been pretty useful, so I, I thought I'd uh, share that with everyone.